we're back to the deep freeze again. I was planning to be planting out my brassicas and kohlrabis today. The plans changed. <laughs> uh, but I did do an update. I did check out everything to see how it survived with what I have as a setup in my cold frame. And I'm happy to report we had survivors. So check out this little, these clips of how my plants made it through negative 22 degrees Celsius wind chills last night. It's negative 14 degrees right now, the ambient temperature right now, and they're doing well. I actually uncovered them. So check out this, check this out and, and see how they fared. In case in an emergency where your plants get hit with a blast of cold, maybe this will be something helpful for you to use in the future. They made it through last night. So happy. This is a cold frame. Tote, blanket, and that. Spinach also made it through and it was negative 22 wind chill. Very happy. Nice. Artichoke. That didn't make it. Big ol' ice block. Currently, it's this in here. have to see about this ranunculus. It's solid, like frozen solid right here. The leaves still look really good. As long as it didn't, the plants themselves didn't get to negative four. But like the plants are warm. And this is new growth since I planted them in here. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping they survive. As you can see here in the raised bed, there is this orange thing. That is actually a heat cable that I have around the perimeter of this raised bed to prevent any frost from creeping in from the sides of the garden box and damaging the root system of the plants. And it works very well, especially when I cover them. As you see here, I have a frost cloth over top Last night, I actually did three layers of frost cloth and a bedroom sheet off of the beds um, over top, and it worked really well to keep the frost out of the beds and allowed my plants to survive the night with that space, space heater going, of course. On some of the other beds, you'll see that I have totes, and I use totes as well as covered over top of the totes, and they stayed nice and warm, the soil did not freeze for the most part. I didn't cover the spinach at all and we'll see what happens with it. Yeah, see here, this is just the lettuce under a tote and then I put a frost cloth over top of that and it was perfect. It stayed perfectly warm. Lettuce is pretty hardy, it can take a little bit of freezing. So while everything is warming up, I decided I'm going to bring over some soil and put it in the greenhouse so it can start to thaw. I really wanted to get some more seedlings started and do some pot ups. So that's what I did. It is so nice and warm in the greenhouse. It is starting to dry. I actually was planning to plant inside today. I grabbed some pots that I was able to pull off the ground because most of them were frozen solid to the ground. Some of them are right full of water. So I just collected the ones that I could and brought them in so they could start thawing out and hopefully I can plant in them tomorrow. I thought it would be fun to take you for a wagon ride. Look at all of that snow. I really wish that these negative temperatures would warm up. We have four or five more days of below zero daytime highs, and then we are supposed to get some beautiful weather. So I'm counting down the days. I cannot wait. One of the reasons why I like leaving my uh, plants in for winter interest 
is it helps melt the snow quicker. Um, see here, this was all left standing in this bed and that was all harvested and chopped out. And so there's lots of snow here and there's ground there. Same with over here. I left the sunflowers in for the birds last season and it's all cleared. Over at the pots over there, you can see it's melted around. So this is one of the things that I like, why I like leaving stuff in the, in the planters and in the garden. Here's another example of why I like leaving winter interest because it melts faster and the soil warms quicker. You're gonna have to stay in the house another day, tiny brassicas. I'm sorry. You as well, little brassicas. And also, I was planning to do my bok choy. That stays in. And so does the kohlrabi. That's okay, a few more days. And then it can go outside. These are, these are warm weather. They can't go out yet. I was planning to put these guys out too. They need a drink of water. These are marigolds, cracker jacks. They're really pretty, really pretty. I need to give them a drink of water and some fertilizer. Okay, I started a third succession of sunflowers. This is technically my fourth succession of sunflowers. Um, and a whole bunch of seeds. These are still cool, hardy crops. More filler flowers for the flower farm. I have them on a heat mat. There's uh, soil blocking. And the ranunculus that we planted the other day. I'm just checking for moisture. It's still fairly moist. No sprouts. Do you need to give this bunny tail grass a haircut? It's getting too tall. I decided I needed to give these storage onions another trim. I really like trimming off the tops of storage onions. It very much helps create larger uh, bulbs of onions, like the, the actual bulb part. Um, when the onion gets sort of heavy on the top, it will flop over and I wanna prevent that. I want really strong bulbs that I can put into the ground and create some nice large size storage onions that we can enjoy um, this winter. So I just went and cut each one. Usually I save these and I use them to make salad. So just something helpful, they'll store in the fridge in a little Ziploc bag for several days and that's usually what I do. I only like the green part of an onion in salad anyway, so this is my way to ensure that I don't have any onion parts of onion in, in the salads. I know, I'm so strange. After I was done cutting, I did actually give this a full year uh, fertilization with just some um, Miracle Grow water soluble fertilizer because I was noticing the celery needed a little bit of love. And I would typically use the fish emulsion, but these are in my house and I accidentally did that once and I will never do it again because I have to live with these plants in my living room. And I'm pretty sure the last time I did fish emulsion, I was just about up for a divorce. So we won't be doing that again. So I have to leave in like, 30 minutes to go pick up Chaz from badminton practice.
but I was motivated and inspired. Um, while I was doing some work in the house, I was listening to some vlogs from um, just people in the US who have been talking about how they, um, there was an announcement or something about preparing for food shortages. And it really motivated me. You know, I had no idea that um, this kind of discussion was happening in the States. So I feel very motivated to do some really quick planting. And so anyone who is new to gardening, um, you know, it is blip it's really cold here. It is negative 22 degrees Celsius wind chill right now. It's cold here, um, but I'm still gardening. I'm still planting stuff and I'm going to share with you what I do um, and it doesn't take a lot of time. I have a half an hour, probably 25 minutes because I've been standing here blabbing with you. I'm just grabbing a couple things and we'll go into the big greenhouse and uh, we'll get some stuff done. Anyway, I was showing an update of these earlier in this video. Look at that. I did not cover these. These are spinach. I did not cover them. It was 20 below. <laughs> 20 below. 20 below. Um, this is in Celsius. Same with my lettuce. It survived. It was covered. But you know what? You can grow your own food. Even if you um, don't know what you're doing, food is really easy to grow. Okay, I think I got the things I need. Grow bag, a knife, the dirt's already in there, and I got my seeds. And I got my bucket because I'm also going to use a ice cream bucket to show you that you can grow stuff. Um, and I have grown things in buckets before. It's not ideal, but you can do it. Nice and sunny and warm in here. I do understand that I have an advantage, but most places where you're watching from is much warmer than it is here where I'm at. So, okay, I know it's really loud with that running and I do apologize, but again, it's 20 below outside in the wind chill and it's gonna run. So we're just, I'll just have to try to talk loud. So what I have here is a 15 gallon grow bag. I was looking for one that was smaller and I can't figure out where I put them, but I'm in a hurry. So I'm not gonna worry about that. And I have lots of soil. So I'm just gonna use this, but you don't have to use one this large. You could use a tote and put some holes in it, like one of these, um, like a tote like this. You can use one like this and put holes in it and then only put like that much soil in it. That way, like, see what I mean? So then that way, when you're growing your food um, and it's cold at night, you can just put the lid on and then take it off during the day. If I didn't have a greenhouse like the one I'm standing in in this video, I would literally just use this tote as my greenhouse. The lids on these, um, they usually are not transparent. They're usually black, the ones that we get here in Canada like this. But I would put like another one inch of soil in this or compost, probably compost, with some worm castings. And that would make a really nice, um, really nice soil to work with and then just direct sow into this then i can put the lid on top and it is a greenhouse you can remove the lid lettuce grows amazing in something like this you have to be careful with growing spinach in something like this because it will get too warm but lettuce will grow really rapid really quickly in a little greenhouse like this i have some seeds that i'm going to go through and pick but I have a, a bucket here that I put some holes in for drainage. So we're gonna plant this up first with some lettuce or some sort of a green. That's a cut and come again green. I like the buckets because you can hang them up. If you are on like growing on a balcony or something, you just have to watch that they don't dry out. That's the only problem. I'm gonna go with lettuce in here. So I went through all of my lettuce seeds and I found the lettuce seed that was the quickest 
to germination or to the quickest to maturity, which was this one. It's Grand Rapids lettuce. It has a 45 day to maturity. So this is really fast and I can use this as a cut and come again lettuce. So I'm gonna just sow these seeds all over in this bucket and that's it. I'm just gonna water it in and I'm going to leave it alone and wait for my salad to be ready. And it's really that simple. These are old seeds. The method I like to use for lettuce is I like to just sprinkle the seeds all over on top. And then I like to just sprinkle a layer of soil on top of the seeds and then soak it in. That's the method I prefer. Um, you can follow the directions on the package if you want. You can make little indents if you want. It's entirely up to you. The lettuce will still grow. It's fine. It will still grow. These are really old seeds, so I wanted to add extra seeds into this um, sowing, but that's just my preference and how I roll. And this is how I've gardened for years. I always usually have good success. So that's what I do. There is no right or wrong way in doing this unless you put it like three inches below the surface. It's likely not going to germinate. Okay. So what I did is I simply, um, put, sprinkled the seeds on top and then I just added some more soil. Now I'm gonna water this in. I don't have water out here because it's clearly, it's frozen right now. So I have to run to the house and get a thing of water and then water it in. So I won't be doing that right now. But um, what I would do is if you are using an ice cream pail to grow lettuce, what you can do is save your lid because to germinate this, once you water it in, you can put the lid on top of it and put it someplace warm and it'll create like a humidity dome. Same with carrots. If you're doing carrots in buckets like this, like baby carrots, you can do the same with that. Um, it just, you have to watch so they don't get too hot and cook. So you have to check it every day. And as soon as it germinates, take the lid off. So, cause it becomes too much of a germination uh, chamber and then it'll become an oven for your poor little seedlings. So there's that. So this is done. I just need to water it. I can just put it, so I'm just gonna pop it in the greenhouse here someplace, probably with my proven winders, hydrangeas, and dogwoods. I'll probably pop it on the pallet with them and let them do their magic. They'll germinate, they'll be fine. And so next, I'm gonna plant some stuff into this grow bag. My dirt is frozen solid. So, plan B. Okay, I had to do plan B. I have 10 minutes and then I have to go get Chaz. Um, that's probably gonna be pushing it. But I went and I got a pot from the house, a smaller pot, which is more than the size I was hoping for. This is one I had bought from my house plants, but didn't use it. And then I got some water because I need to water those in so it works out anyways. This will be really, really quick. 10 minute gardening. So I got my pot filled up with dirt. Now I just need to figure out what it is I want to plant. Um, so to make like a mini kitchen garden, what I used to do before I had all of this kind of stuff where I was like basically growing my groceries out of necessity, um, I used to just use random pots and I would grow a couple different things that had quite quick turnaround time of production for like a, a garden, for like for it, for a kitchen, kitchen gardening kind of a thing. So this, um, in this pot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of kohlrabi. Now, kohlrabi wouldn't be a really good choice, but I like to use the stems and the leaves, and it's really fast, so it produces lots of food, um, not just for one meal. You could make several meals out of one plant. So I'm going to put at least one or two kohlrabi seeds in here to germinate. Now, I am also going to add carrots because they have... Um, 
once the kohlrabi is harvested then the carrots can keep growing so i'm going to add some carrots in here as well these ones are 65 day carrots so i could have baby carrots and so that's one of the reasons why i'm going to put some of them in here as well we're going to do some swiss chard and radish my soil is really dry. I should have this hose down, but I just don't have time right now. So I'll soak it once I'm done planting. One of the things a person can do is, even though I have a greenhouse, I'm using it because like I said, it's really early here for me. I'm in zone 2B. So my season is much longer. My winter season is much longer and my spring is much shorter than many of you. So this is nice and portable. So you can put it outside during the day and set it inside if you need to. Um, at night and and whatnot so something to consider see kohlrabi seeds these are old seeds so i'm going to use more i'm going to put two per hole These are radish seeds. Just a sprinkle. And in between, I love carrots. Chaz's favorite snack, he takes them every day in his lunch. And these are old seeds, like five years old, so use them up. Now, I normally would not pour water on seedlings like that, but it's what I have. And I usually would use a watering can or a watering wand because that's more professional, but this will work. And I got the job done. And now I gotta go get chas. <laughs> In case anyone was wondering, I'm Christy and I'm a so-so step-parent. I'm gonna get fired as a step-parent is what's gonna happen. He's gonna fire me. It's not a big deal. His mom is his badminton coach. So it's not like he's like standing outside the school waiting for a ride, like there's nobody there. She's got him. I ain't worried. So the other day in the vlog, Chaz backed my truck up to play basketball. I don't know if you guys seen that or not. That little bugger, he backed it up like 10 feet. He moved my seat. He adjusted my seat to move it 10 feet. So if I'm late, my story is not that I was planting vegetables with you guys. It was, I was fixing my adjusted seat. That's my story. So, so parenting. Pretty catchy, hey? Do you want me to stop? Sure. You know what this is called? What? So so parenting. What do you mean? So so sort of okay. Sort of on time. Sort oh. of not on time. Pretty close. I wait for you a heck of a lot more than five minutes. I guess. How was school? Good. Good day. For the splash. Think it's warm enough for the splash park yet? No. Come on, try it out. It looks fun. Freeze to death. Noah sure went down. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Remember the other day when you stood on the side of the road? How long ago was that? Like a couple weeks? Yeah. And it was like way over your head. That was like right up here. Here? Somewhere? Yep. Yeah. I'm back. So, you know, Food 
Food sustainability, it doesn't have to be fancy. Yes, I have a great big heated greenhouse. Yes, I have a cold frame. Yes, I have a farm office. Yes, I have land and I can grow stuff in the land. We didn't start here. Before I knew how to garden, you know, those were some grim times for me. And I learned by, by trying and not being discouraged if I didn't know how to do something. And if I didn't succeed, I just try again. And as long as a person keeps trying and, you know, not just giving it a half-assed go, just really giving it uh, a, fair, a fair effort. And as you can see, like planting a few seeds, it really doesn't take a lot of effort. I can, you know, plant it, whatever. It's not something that is hard to do. And even, you know, even if it is something that is a hard thing to grow, you don't have to start with the difficult, complicated thing. Watering and such in a small container, there is that concern. You do have to be concerned about watering, um, that plants do dry out and that a person does have to have some kind of a commitment. But you could also, you know, if you are somebody who wants to start growing more food, you can do something like if you're not going to be home, if you have to work and it's a lot of maintenance, watering plants is a lot of maintenance, you can just go get, um, you know, it's not really that expensive to go get a few pieces of drip tubing with some emitters and invest in a 40 or $50 timer that goes on to your water. And you can keep that. You have it year after year after year. It's an investment that you have. So you can very easily hook that up to a drip system. So if you have, say, an ice cream bucket with lettuce, you can put one emitter, emitter in that. If you have a bigger container like the one we just planted up, you could put two emitters in that. And you can use your space efficiently. It doesn't have to be fancy. I've grown in these totes. I've used these totes as greenhouses. I can tell you, I didn't start here. <laughs> I didn't start here. Every person just has to find their groove when it comes to gardening and just give it a shot, give it a go. I mean, I didn't know if this was gonna happen. This was an investment. I mean, I ordered these from New Brunswick and they didn't quite die, but they're not thriving because I mean, 20 below Celsius wind chills does this to plants. Us as homesteaders who want to be more self-reliant and self-sustainable, it's about being willing to learn from all successes and all failures and everything in between. That's the point. Come get my trusty dusty water can. Still frozen. Can't water them yet, it's still frozen. So I'll go get my other, I will go get my other stuff uh, done and maybe by then it'll thaw out because it's actually quite warm in here now. So yeah. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Bye for now. And look. They didn't die. They're still hanging in there. See, you can grow stuff in garbage. This was a recyclable and we're growing food guys we're growing food look at us go